Hi. Welcome. This is Bill O'Donnell, and welcome to another program on spirituality. Today in the studio, we're going to do a show that I probably want to do for, I don't know, 25 or 30 years, and I'll tell you why. I ran into a couple of young elders from the Church of Latter-day Saints uh, on the street not too long ago and gave them a ride and had a talk, and it reminded me of an old story that I'm going to tell in a minute. But first, I want to introduce Elder Cook and Elder Nelson from the Church of Latter-day Saints who are out on mission. And uh, if you've ever been home and a couple of young guys, wholesome looking guys came to your door and you turned them away, well, guess what? You got a second chance. Because today I've asked these guys to come in and tell them what they would have told you if you let them in the door and, and, and uh, forgotten your Christian duties of being hospitable. So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. I'll tell you the history. I was in my 20s in uh, Sacramento. I was living in Sacramento. I was going to law school at the time. And a couple of guys, that, that uh, a couple of wholesome guys came to my doorstep and they asked me if I wanted to uh, learn about the Church of Latter-day Saints. And I said, yeah, probably surprised them at the time. But uh, I was a lapsed Catholic at the time and thought, well, I would like to learn something about it. And these guys were kind enough to come by two nights a week for about six weeks and laid it out to me. And I'm still thankful. And so whenever I see a couple of guys walking the streets, they're out there walking their faith, literally. I mean, they're probably in their late teens, early 20s, putting their life on hold to go out and share their faith. And I want to acknowledge them for them. So thanks for coming in and sharing it here. Good thanks to be for having us. All right. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got in the program, and how this thing happens. Tell them, first of all, tell them what the Church of Latter-day Saints is, for some who don't even know. Okay. Well, we're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, like Bill said. and. Uh, what we do when, when we turn 19, when the young men turn 19, we, we get a call to go on a mission. Um, and everyone who, who, all the young men who turn 19 have this opportunity. And uh, we were called by, by a prophet, um, a prophet of God, who gives us these calls. And what we do for two years is we go out and we share, you know, what we've learned, what we know about Jesus Christ, what we know about God, and what we know, you know, will uplift other people, what will help them. And so we do that for two years, uh, full time every day, 9 to 9.30, or 9.30, 9.30 every day. So, so what, what's the first thing that happens? So you say, okay, I've, I've got the call, I want to do this. Uh, what's the next thing that happens? Next thing that happens is, you know, you basically whip out a map, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> That's what I did. When I uh, got the call, I was like, okay, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where is that? <laughs> I'm from Connecticut, so I had no idea where it was. So I had to get a map out, and I checked it out. And then, you know, after that comes the process of preparing, however much you want to prepare yourself for your mission. Uh, in, my, in my case, I never had any, like, older siblings or anything go on missions before, so I was the first in my family. And so I didn't have, you know, a lot of experience with, this, with the mission thing. So what I did was just try and prepare as best I could within about two months. And within that two months, you know, I, I read the Book of Mormon. Um, you know, I finished the Book of Mormon for the first time. And, you know, I, I got to know more about what I was actually going to be teaching and you know I got to feel the spirit and know what that feels like because I never really felt it before in my life so it's a big stage of preparation I guess right after you get your mission call because things tend to hurry up a little bit and uh, you're just kind of counting down the days so you grew up in Connecticut where did you grow up Oregon you grew up in Oregon okay yeah. so do all the guys who are going to go out uh, go to go to Utah first for training and then leave from there uh, yeah. I think I saw a video that uh, I, somebody sent me or I saw somewhere that uh, it was a great uh, religion and ethics. Uh, one of my new favorite TV shows is uh, religion and news ethics and they did a wonderful piece I think it was those guys on, on just this process and that also prepped me for asking you guys to come on and do that. So you did go to Utah for how yeah. long? Well I went to Utah for, for two months because I was called to, to a Spanish speaking mission so I had to learn, I had to go there and learn Spanish. And all the people who go there to learn English are only there for about three weeks. And they go there and they learn um, basically how, how, the, how to teach better, you know, how, how to be a better teacher and what they're supposed to teach. And most importantly, what we do there is we learn how to feel the Spirit. I mean, we learn how to recognize those promptings that come from our Holy Father. And, uh, and so it depends on, there's, there's a lot of languages that are taught there. Um, you could be there up to three months if you're learning like Chinese or Cambodian, things like that. And so they, they teach, I don't know, like 25, 30 different languages there. And so it depends on what language you've called, you're called to speak, mm -hmm. and how long you'll be there for training and preparation. 
All right, and so here you are in the land of enchantment. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Yeah, so it's a little different. So, okay, tell tell the folks at home if they if they don't know a thing about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, what's the first thing that that, that you can tell them about it? Well, um, it's it's a little bit different than your mainstream, I guess, faith in the world. Uh, you know, all the faiths that we've come in contact with on our missions, they somehow relate. You know, for the most part, everybody that we come in contact with, they, they all believe in some kind of supreme being or, you know, a God. And so when we go out and we speak to people, we try and, we try and find these, you know, things that we have in common. And pretty much everybody believes in some kind of supreme being, you know. Everybody's got that, that being that they look up to as a God, as a higher power. And so, you know, we know um, throughout our own faith that we do have a Heavenly Father and that we know that He's perfect, He's all-wise, He's all-powerful, uh, you know, He's merciful, He's kind, and He's just. Um, we know that we can have faith in our Heavenly Father and that we can love Him with all of our hearts. But, you know, as our, as our Heavenly Father, you know, He loves us. And just like any, basically any father on earth, uh, he wants to see his children be happy. He wants to be wants to see them be successful. I know my father wants to see the best for me. He wants me to be successful in life. He wants me to succeed and to be happy. It's the same thing with our Heavenly Father. He wants us all to succeed and to be happy to eventually one day return to live with Him. He doesn't want to just kind of send us away and, and leave us because, you know, we came from somewhere. And, you know, that somewhere was in the presence of our Heavenly Father and He wants us to be back again. He wants to see our faces again. And so and that's one of the one of the main things that, that we do have in common with everybody else is we do believe in this in this God, this heavenly father. But we believe more in a sense that he is our actual father. And you know, because he is our father, we're all brothers and sisters here on this earth. And so it, it kinda helps you keep in check. Uh, you know, you don't want to go flipping off your brothers or anything. So you just want to you want to treat them as you would your family, and it, it helps you out, I think, when you when you see everybody as your brothers or your sisters, because it's just you know you don't you're not typically mean to your to your family. It sounds good. You know, it's funny as I was sitting here listening to you, those things you ascribe to God, I felt them in you. It was like it's almost if you believe that, they're gonna the real value of that belief is it's gonna manifest in you. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I could actually feel that just now. How about you? When you hear Elder Nelson and you're trained to do it too, what's your what's your thoughts about you know what like people out there wondering what do you get out of the deal? You know, I mean for, mm. for being <laughs> to being devout and to go out and do this mission. What do we get out of the deal? Yeah. Um, well we, we get a lot of sacrifice. <laughs> but uh, see we when we go out we, we pay for it all ourselves. And it's around ten thousand dollars for the two years for rent, for you know, all those things that we that we have to have to have. But um, as for uh, our benefits, we get to uh, we get to learn more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we get to learn more about what He's taught us, what He what He showed us. And more importantly, we get to feel it every day of our lives. You know, we get to give unselfish service service for two years. Uh, something that that brings you closer to God, brings you closer to Jesus Christ. And you know, it's not it's not for our gain. You know, we just want to see other people have that same love, feel that same spirit that Jesus Christ brought to the earth when He was here. And uh, when we see people change, when we see people actually grab onto that, you know, grab onto the feelings they have in their hearts, grab onto those types of things, that's what gives us the most joy. And, you know, it's just rewarding to see people change their lives from complete going just, just down to, to complete change around to, to, you know, I know who I am. I know who God is. I know my relationship with Him. And, uh, and you know, I know what I have to do now. I know what this life's all about. And when you see people, you know, get that change of heart, is what it's called, you know. You you feel joy, you know, more joy than you could ever imagine, and uh, that's what that's our reward for it. And we know that you know our heavenly Father smiles on that. You know, he looks down and he says, "Well done," you know, bringing one of my children home. Yeah. And so, well, that's phenomenal. If you've just joined us, uh, we're talking to a couple of young elders here in Santa Fe who are on mission. One from Connecticut and the other from Oregon. And they've come out here at their own expense to uh, be of value in your life and share something about it. So I'm doing my part by inviting them over to my place here at the table and uh, get to share with you and uh, here on community television. And I want you to, to uh, take a, you can have a website if you want to get some more information, www.mormon.org or give a call to 800 
438-7557. You can ask for a representative to come by your house. You can ask, they'll send you a free Bible if you want it or a free Book of Mormon. And I would encourage you to do that. If you have any any questions that we don't cover here today or you'd like to know more about it at home, uh, you know, call up and find out this information. It's all free to you and nobody will come unless you ask them. Is that right? That's right. So what else? Tell us a little bit about it. Now you have, if somebody didn't know anything about the about the Book of Mormon, because uh, you guys are also offering, I think that's a King James Bible, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're offering them a King James Bible and a Book of Mormon. Tell the folks at home out there that the, how does the Book of Mormon fit into the Bible as, as we know it? Well, um, the Bible was written by prophets. Uh, you know, we got, we got mi movies coming out like The Prince of Egypt with, with Moses. You know, he was a prophet who lived a long time ago and he wrote in the Bible. He wrote the first four books of the Bible. And so these prophets, they're inspired men from God. You know, they're, they're men that, are, that were sent down from God to, to teach the people about the plan uh, that, that our Heavenly Father wants us to follow, the way to get back to Him. And so these prophets, they teach us about these things, and they write, they teach us about Jesus Christ, first of all. Um, he's, he's the focal point of every prophet's uh, testifying. Um, he's, he's the one they always talk about. They always talk about a Messiah, or, or someone who will come down to save us from our sins. And so these prophets, they, they testify of Him, you know, just like we're talking to you. They go out and they teach the people. And another way they do it is they write down their, their testimonies in sacred books called scripture like the Bible is full of uh, you know writings of tons of prophets who testified of Jesus Christ and so one of these these prophets who lived a long time ago his name is Lehi and uh, he lived in Jerusalem 600 years before Jesus Christ ever came to the American continent or I mean ever came to the earth but Lehi he was commanded by the Lord to take his family and leave Jerusalem and from there they sailed to the American continent and they started a great civilization and uh, among these people, the Lord continued to call prophets. And he continued to teach them his word from, from revelation, from his spirit. And so the Book of Mormon is just the writing of, of these men who lived in America, these prophets. And it contains a history of a people for about a thousand years who lived here in the American continent. And it just it testifies of Jesus Christ. Um, it's called the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. So we have the Old Testament, the New Testament. Now we, we have another testament that, that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. And um, the crowning event in the Book of Mormon, the thing that, um, that makes it another testament is that Jesus Christ, he visited the people here in America. Uh, in John, he, he says that other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must visit, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one shepherd and one fold. And so these other sheep that, that he's talking about are the people who lived on the American continent. And um, so he, he came and visited them here, and he set up the same exact organization, the same church that he set up in Jerusalem. He set up 12 disciples, or 12 apostles, to teach the people so they wouldn't fall into error. And so the Book of Mormon and the Bible, together, um, they testify of Jesus Christ. They testify of His divine mission, his, that He is the Son of God. And uh, through, through both of them, we can know the exact path to follow. Um, we like to use an example of, of having a nail on a board. And that nail on the board is, is the Bible. And um, you can still move the board around. You know, you have that one nail, and the board can kind of swivel. But if you get another nail on that board, it's going to be firm and steadfast, and you're going to have, you know, it's going to be there. And so that's the Book of Mormon and the Bible together. They're meant to be used together. Um, one testifies of the other. Uh, it's just, you know, it talks, they all testify of Jesus Christ, because it's all written by the same prophets of God. So the Book of Mormon talks about Jesus Christ in the New World, in essential. Yeah. yeah. And he picked 12 guys. Did he have as much trouble with, uh, with his 12 over here that he had over there in Jerusalem? Well, for, for about 200 years after that, they had peace. They had a lot of peace. When was it? When was he? When did? When was he here? Do you recall? It was within the year after he he had rose oh. from the grave. Okay. Who was here then? I mean, at that time, Native Americans. Their ancestors. Yeah, their ancestors. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't heard much of that. Um, okay, I, I, I interrupt you just for a minute. No. Give us an example of. Okay. Here we are at, at at this table. Most of the time, you guys are going out and, and knocking on doors, right? So when you get to a door, I mean, just out of curiosity, maybe we'd say this, but you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but what's just been your experience here in this area about uh, how many people are, say, at least willing to, to, to give it a chance and to listen to you, percentage-wise? What, you, what, you, what are you taught in school and what are you actually realizing out here? Well, when we're taught in the MTC in the Missionary Training Center, uh, they don't really teach much anything about that kind of missionary work. They just teach about the Spirit. And so okay. we don't really know when we come out, I know when I first came out on my mission, it was a way different experience for me. I never really knocked on any door that I didn't know. 
And so knocking on doors was, was interesting. In my first area, Albuquerque, when I was knocking on doors there, um, for instance, like around campus area, the UNM campus, we get into probably about, I'd say, 40%, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of students that are, that are willing to learn, that are willing to listen. Mm -hmm. um, a few other areas, you know, my, this is my area now, and I would say we get, I don't know, somewhere around 10, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe 10%. Okay. Better. The people who who aren't interested are they are they generally civil or do you get some of the other kind too? Little of both. Little of both. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's talk about the people that you know that, that are open and, and are civil, and you get in the door and they invite you in. What are the what are some of the first things that that, uh, that you like to tell them or questions that they have? Well, first we just like to get to know them. Right. I mean, we we're here to to serve the people basically, and so we <clears throat> first we just ask them, you know, who they are, where they came from, you know, what's some of their background, do they have family, you know, things like that. And we just like to get to know them, and we like to <clears throat> to understand what some of their beliefs are, what some of their backgrounds are, and then we first we generally just we say, you know, we want to share a little message with you about about God or about Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we usually share a little bit about Heavenly Father first, and then about Jesus Christ, and we talk about. Um, the Book of Mormon and, and about prophets and things like that. Mm -hmm. And just we, we teach them the, the straight doctrine that Jesus Christ has set up when he was on the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, the first time we meet him, that's about all we tell him. It's just, right. This is, you know, the basics of what. So it's fundamental. There's, there's no difference in the fundamental Judeo Christian story except for the difference in the Book of Mormon of coming here, right? It's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. There's not much difference in the teachings. It's basically a, a Christian message, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, okay. it's the message that Jesus Christ shared yeah. when he was on the American continent. I'm just curious, how many people are even aware of that? When you get out there, what, what percentage of people who don't know the story, don't know the Judeo-Christian tradition? Many. Yeah. Oh. Too many, he says. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, are you starting from scratch or are you, you know, or, or people have a general Usually understanding? Usually people have a general, general understanding yeah, of yeah. a little bit. You know, a lot of them have preconceived ideas of who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, that doesn't really make a difference because, you know, all, over that, all that we try to do when we go knocking on doors is to bring the Spirit with us mm -hmm. so that they can feel the Spirit as we teach about Jesus Christ. You know, that's the main purpose of, of our missions is to bring people to the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ and that He is the Redeemer and the Savior of the world and that He did pay for our sins and He allowed for us to be able to return to our Heavenly Father. And that is the main part of our, of, our, of our missions, of our message that we share. Because that's the thing that's going to bring joy. You know, that's, that's the thing that's going to bring inner peace for the rest of your life. That's what you can hold on to. You know, these material things uh, that we pretty much give up when we go on our missions, come to realize that they're not that important. Um, you realize that the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is everything. And that it's the most important thing that we can have. And it's the thing that we can look to over and over again because it'll always be there. That's great. Um, what has been the biggest resistance? Why do you think people resist hearing the message? Mm. Man, I Just, don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery, isn't it? You know? There's a lot of different reasons. Just a lot of, mostly it's just they don't understand what, what we actually do. People think that we're, we're coming over there to like, you know, bust into their house and try and shove something down their throat. like. You know, like a Book of Mormon trying to shove a Book of Mormon down their throat. It's not how it is. You know, it's just we go there just to bring the Spirit and to teach about Christ. And so a lot of people, when they when they see us coming, you know, they might get intimidated a little bit or worry that we're just going to be there just to bash with them or or that we have something that we're just going to try and force on them. And it's not it's not about that at all. It's about you know Jesus Christ. He was a missionary, and what we do is we try and be as much like Jesus Christ was as we possibly can. And so, you know, we try and bring the message as Jesus Christ would bring the message himself. So that's, you know, it's just a lot of confusion, I guess, is why they mainly shut us out. Yeah. Uh, well, in this plural, plural society, there's any number of Christian denominations, as you guys, I'm sure, well know. Um, what's your perception? I mean, what's it, what's it like growing up in your tradition and meeting people from other Christian denominations when you all have the same basic belief system and yet there are all these different you know spokes on the wheel or something but there's so many different what's your what's your take on that or why do you think that is either one well well when I was younger I never 
I never knew that we were all we had a you know a similar basis. I was just kind of like I never really talked about other religions that much. Mm -hmm. But you know, as I've grown up and as I've had friends that were different faiths, and you know, I've been on a missionary, and I've seen all these people. It's amazing how many people you know have faith in that one supreme being, have faith in that one God, and uh, uh, we just try to bring that out. We try to um, build on what their faith already is. But the most important thing that we that we try to teach people is that everyone has the chance to know for themselves what God taught, what Jesus Christ taught, who they really are. And uh, we try to help them figure out how they can do that. And, you know, we use, <clears throat> we use the writings of Jesus when he, uh, from the Bible. And we, we teach them about the Holy Ghost, you know, the spirit that we've been talking about. We teach them how they, how they can feel and recognize that and how they can know what is truth and what is not. Because, like you said, there are a lot of different religions. And, you know, how are we supposed to know what the truth is? And so we teach them how they can find out, and that's you know through prayer, and it's through sincere asking of our Heavenly Father, um, what what is the right truth? What is you know what did He really teach? You know what am I supposed to follow? And so we we try to teach them how how to ask those kind of questions to God, and and how to receive answers, and just as it, as it's taught in the Bible, you know, asking you shall receive. And so you know we try to try to teach them how to do that. <laughs> You know, throughout the country, there's. Uh, it seems like there's always a Church of Latter-day Saint, you know, almost in any good-sized town, as there are of other denominations. And yet, you guys come in from out of town and and willing to go out and share this, you know, with people. Why is that? I mean, the the other denominations, they're they're you know they're they're going to be most, except for perhaps the Jehovah's Witness, you know. You two guys, I mean, you 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 the two those two groups are the ones that are known for reaching out. Why do you think that is? Well, um, when you when you really want to know something, for instance, myself, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I was going to go on a mission or not up until right before I went. And the reason is because I went to church, you know, with my family as a youth, and I didn't really know why I was going. <laughs> and, and I just went to go hang out with my friends pretty much. And growing up in the church, you know, it's not like we're, you know, we have this testimony automatically. And when I went off to college, um, you know, I, I didn't go to church for about a year. And I stopped going, I stopped praying, I stopped basically doing everything that I n needed to be doing. Mostly because, you know, of situations in my own life that came up. And I just basically gave up. And so, finally, you know, it, I got to the point of, you know, either this is right, this is going to help me a lot, or, you know, I'm just going to dig a deeper hole here. And so what I decided to do was to read the Book of Mormon and to figure out if it was true or not. And so I did that. I read the Book of Mormon in about three months. And every day I'd read it, and every day I would pray about it. And the fact, you know, that my parents were members and some of the other people that I knew were members wasn't what affected me. Uh, what affected me was the Book of Mormon itself and how we have a promise given to us that if we read something, if we want to know something, if we want to know the truthfulness of it, we can know. You know, it's not like we're just stuck here in the dark. We can know the truth of things. It's taught in the New Testament, it's taught in the Old Testament, it's taught in the Book of Mormon, that the Holy Ghost will confirm truth to us. And that's exactly what the Holy Ghost did for me. It confirmed it so much that if I didn't go on a mission, you know, I would be doing something that I would regret for the rest of my life. Because I knew it for a fact that the Book of Mormon was true and that it is another testament of Jesus Christ. I knew that through that, I knew that the Bible was true. I knew that Joseph Smith was an actual prophet and he saw God. And because I knew these things, I had to get out and share it because it brought me so much joy and brought me out of a hole that was so deep that I, I had to help you know, my, my brothers and my sisters get out of any problems that they did. And so that's when I decided to go on a mission. And you know, ever since then, I've learned more on my mission than I have in my entire life. Um, there's, it's just an amazing experience that I would never, ever give up. You know, it's amazing. As I'm sitting here, Elder Nelson, I hear your story. The one thing that struck me is because you, the, the reason all that probably happens is because you sought it. You sought the Holy Spirit by seeking it out. If you're just sitting at home and you're not doing anything and you're wondering about God and about this and that, because the Bible says you've got to seek before you're going to find. 
you got to knock before it's going to be open to you, and you got to ask before you're going to receive. And that's why I respect you guys. And, I, and now I thought of a little, little show and tell here. I don't know if you can call the Vatican and they'll send you a Bible or a catechism, but if you call the Mormon Church, they're going to give, send you a Bible and a Book of Mormon. <laughs> that's something to think about, huh? So those numbers, those numbers, you want to get that down, you want to call 1-888-537-2200 and they will send you either Book of Mormon or you can call this other number at 1212-888-537-1212 they'll send you a free Bible. That's a pretty good deal, huh? So you guys are putting it right out there when people want it. In just a few minutes we've got left, any final words you have that you want to tell the folks out there about yourself or about the church or how would you encourage them? Say, okay, maybe I'm not ready or interested in becoming a Church of Latter-day Saint, but what, what advice do you have in their spiritual life? What kind of recommendations can you make? Well, um... After all that's been said, you know, after all we've said and done, you know, the one thing that we want people to know, one thing we want them to, to find out for themselves is about Jesus Christ. Um, it's about if He really lived, if He was really the Son of God, and that if He really took upon Himself all of our sins so that we can become clean, that we can have joy in this life. You know, that's, that's the one message we want to get out to people. That's the one thing that we want them to find out for themselves. And the only way they can find that out is they, they put their faith on the line. And they they have to take that little leap of faith to ask God, um, ask Him in the name of Jesus Christ as, as you know, He's been taught and He's promised to send His Spirit, His Comforter, that, and you'll get a feeling that's overwhelming like He was describing. Um, it's a feeling that you can't ever deny. It's a feeling that will be woven into your very being. You know, it's a feeling that I've had before that, that I can't ever deny that, that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And through Him, we can become clean. We can become, you know, we can return to our Heavenly Father. And that's the, the one message that we would like to, to leave with everybody. You know, just come unto Jesus Christ. He's, he's the Son of God. He's our Savior. All right. How about you, Elder Nelson, for the last word? Last word? Um, I would say that, you know, try it out, I guess, is what I would say. The Book of Mormon. I doubted it a lot. And, you know, I'm... I'm coming, you know, as I said in my story earlier, um, I, needed, I needed something to get me out of a hole, and I tried it because I didn't really know. And so I would just encourage you to try it, to read the Book of Mormon um, and find out for yourself. If you really want to know, if you have faith in Christ, and you ask through prayer, uh, you'll, you'll have the answer. Like you said, if you seek, you shall find. You know, I was seeking and I found. And it brought me so much joy, and I'm, it's... No, I have to. I have to share it with the world because it'll bring them so much joy, and they just some of them just don't realize it right now, but but it will. So I would just encourage you, uh, encourage everyone to read the Book of Mormon, to read the Bible, and to pray about its truthfulness, because just praying about it and reading it will will so, will better your life so much. It'll bring you closer to God. It'll develop a personal relationship with your heavenly Father and with Jesus Christ. And that is something that, you know, you can't, ever, you can't ever trade away. You can't ever lose it because you'll have that forever for the eternities. And that, I think, is worth it. Yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate you guys taking time out of the schedule to come and share with the, the folks here that they'll be seeing this on television. And uh, uh, I hope you will uh, watch those credits and uh, call those numbers. And if you want to have one of these fellows come by and, and visit with you, I can tell you from my own experience, I have, in my experience with elders here and around the world, when I run into them, you can't miss them. They all dress like this. <laughs> and uh, I've never met a finer group of young men. And uh, I know from my meeting and conversation with them, they come from and represent tremendous family values. So if you're sitting at home and you've got nothing going in your life and you want to uh, change it, uh, you might want to consider calling those numbers and uh, having one of those guys come out to see a couple of them. Or call and just ask for a Bible of your own. If you don't have one, they're going to give you one for free. And they're also going to give you a Book of Mormon. So I would encourage you to do that. So thanks again for coming, fellas. Best of luck and good luck on your mission. Thank you and, very much. And uh, God bless both of you. So on behalf of everybody here at Spirituality, I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned next week for another program on spirituality.